Okay, in this video, we're going to talk about velocity and acceleration in a beginning Calc 1 class. I'm just going to work out one example that's got three different parts to the question, and pretty much it's going to cover average velocity, instantaneous velocity, and acceleration, because those are the most common things that you start out with initially in Calc 1. All right, so our example here is, it says a particle moves on the x-axis in such a way that its position at time t is given by the position function s of t equals 6 t to the third minus 2 t squared plus 5, where s is measured in feet and t is measured in seconds. All right, so for our first part of the question, I've rewrote the position function here at the beginning. Um, so part A is going to ask you to determine the average velocity on the interval from 2 to 3. All right, now if you recall average velocity, you're going to do the average rate of change formula, and you're going to do it to the position function. So in other words, I'm going to do S of 3 minus S of 2 all over 3 minus 2. All right, this should look familiar to you as your average rate of change function. All right, so when I want average velocity... I do the average rate of change formula with the position function. All right, so working out the math here, putting 3 into that function, I get a 149 minus when I take 2 and plug into that function, then I get a 45. And then this is going to be just over 1 because 3 minus 2 is 1. All right, and then when you subtract that out there, you're going to get 104. And we said that S was measured in feet and T is measured in seconds. So this is going to be 104 feet per second there for the average velocity. All right, now continuing with the same question. All right, again, I have wrote the position function that was given in the original question here. They're going to say find the instantaneous velocity after four seconds. All right, so again, instantaneous velocity, all right, after four seconds. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to actually have to calculate the velocity function. So they give me, I'm going to rewrite it, the position function which is the 6t to the third minus 2t squared plus 5. All right, now as we recall, if we've got the position function, all we have to do is take the derivative, and we will get the velocity function. So I'm going to write this as s prime of t, all right, but that is also equivalent to v of t, the velocity function. And it's straight power rule on each of these, so it's going to be an 18t squared minus a 4t. Now that I have the velocity function, I want it after 4 seconds, so then I can calculate V of 4, and that's just a matter of plugging it in here. So I'm going to have 18 times a 4 squared minus a 4 times 4. That's going to be a 288 minus a 16. That's going to give me... 272, all right, and again, instantaneous velocity, that's just going to be feet per second because of the way the story problem was originally presented. All right, so again, instantaneous velocity, you will take that position function, you will take the derivative of it, which will give you the velocity function, and then you can just plug 4 in. All right, for the third or um, final part, all right, um, it could ask you then to find the acceleration after 6 seconds. So from the previous screen, I have got the position function, I have got the velocity function, all right, and as you recall, if I want the acceleration function, then I need to take the derivative of that velocity function. So starting just with the velocity here, so velocity function, which we calculated in the last part of the question, was an 18t squared minus a 4t. All right, so if I take the derivative, so the derivative of the velocity function, we can also say that is the acceleration function. And again, just straight power rule here, that's going to be a 36t and then minus 4. I want the acceleration after 6 seconds, so I can calculate a of 6, which is no more than plugging 6 in, so 36 times 6 minus 4. All right, that'll give me like a 216 minus 4, for an overall answer of 212. Now, we do have to remember how acceleration is labeled. 
This uh, story problem was in feet and seconds, so this is going to be feet per second squared. That doesn't look like a squared there. Let's write that over again so that it looks better. All right, so it's going to be feet per second squared because it is acceleration. All right, so basically one story problem there with a part A, a part B, and a part C. Um, introducing just the idea of velocity and acceleration at the very beginning of a Calc 1 class. Definitely, thanks for watching. If the videos are helping, please share with your friends so they can benefit too. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on those notifications. Thanks.